welcome to another episode of the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the Crispy Noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. Folks, it's our job to give you some of the most interesting tidbits in world sports, entertainment, odd news, and whatever else we happen to stumble across in this hour-long podcast. Thank you for joining us. I am Rich Liebig. And I'm Michael Costanzo. And uh, we do have a couple topics in the world of sports, entertainment, and odd news that we're going to get to. And uh hopefully uh tickle your brain <laughs> as we uh Got a nice little tickle yep as we go through uh some of the week's news uh but before we get to all of that at hand mikey my friend how you doing what is happening in costanzo country i'm doing pretty good um the girlfriend and i were at <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, there you go we were at the, the girlfriend and I. The girlfriend and I. Rich. We were at the the fire. Where were you? We were at the fire and ice. The fire and festival. ice festival. What is this? Quite, <laughs> quite a quite a dilemma. What is this accent? I don't know why. It's oh yes. The girlfriend. I don't the, know, girl, the girlfriend. Yeah, and I. you mean? I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> we. <laughs> I don't know why. It's a, it was a funny way to start off that sentence. I don't know why. I guess, I guess it is. It's a little funny. <laughs> we were anyway. We were at the. What the a the dilemma! <laughs> We've had fire and ice. That's two opposite ends of the spectrum. It is. It is. It's two opposite what ends of the spectrum. <laughs> that's what. That's what Upper Dublin uh, School District was trying to do. They had a fire and ice festival. Um, what a quandary! What a quandary! <laughs> they had an outdoor event uh, this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, it was all in February. In February, it was a. It was a brave move. Um, Jordan was there to uh, sell uh, some of the jewelry that she makes, and I was there to eat food truck food. Um, nice. Yeah, uh, they had Humpty Dumplings, oh. so I, I go wherever Humpty Dumplings goes. If people aren't familiar, it's it's this little place in, uh, oh God, what's it called? <laughs> Glenside. Glenside. They have uh-huh. a store in Glenside, and it's it's really good stuff. They also had a Steve's Prince of Steaks food trucks. Yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. So I was basically eating various forms of cheesesteak throughout the day. I, I like a good Steve's. I like Steve's too. Yeah. They they, they never get mentioned. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. So I got the Steve's. Cheesesteak. I got the Humpty Dumpling cheesesteak dumpling. Yeah, you always hear. I know. The, I know how Philadelphia of us when we talk about cheesesteaks. Of course, but you always hear Pat Gino's. Those are tourist right. traps. Those are tourist traps. Don't don't, yeah, don't even no. bother. Literally, pick any other random mom and pop place on a corner, and you get something better than Gino's and Pat's. Yeah. Um, Delisandro's. I I'm haven't. A, I haven't been there in a while. I have recently. Like yeah, like in the past like year. Yeah. How is um, it? Because I am I think they might be heading to that level because am I, I am, I, am I gonna catch flack for this? I don't know see that's what I want to ask you. I saw a video on uh, I forget the channel now it was somewhere on YouTube it's it's, it's a uh, I forget it was a popular food channel right and they had their host working at Delisandro's and that was like the Philly cheesesteak episode. So you think they're too and big? They're getting too I'm big. I'm starting now. to wonder, like, are is Del Sanders actually starting to become on that level of uh, Geno's and Pat's? Yes. Oh, a, l- a, I little, a little, so. a little bit. No, look. So oh. here's the thing: they they still make a very good cheesesteak, but I think for a long time they were successful being on the outskirts, right? Right. See, I thought and that was their saving they're, they're, grace. They're not in like Center City. They're on the outskirts. Nobody like, unless you're from this area, you don't really know. To go there, right? Right, unless somebody tells you to go there. Right, I was hoping it was going to stay that my, way. My my thing. I feel like now the secret's out, and everybody goes there, there now. It's it's it, it's a madhouse. But my thing is that there's a different. There's a few different ways. Cheesesteak aficionados will know. There's a few different ways to do the steak. Yes. Right. You have like the big slabs. You have like the roughly chopped stuff. You have like the finer, almost like uh, like diced up stuff. But Dallas Sanders, the last time I had it, was almost like minced. It was oh. like it was like very very granulated, and I'm and I'm going is this is this just a weird like one off like do they just like having a bad day or something? But it was very like like imagine like very finely minced meat. I'm like what like why is it so granular? Maybe I just got a bad one. Maybe. It, ha- it happens. I mean, taste wise, it's still good, but I like bigger pieces of steak. In yeah, you want to know that it's steak pieces. You want to know you got a piece of steak in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Like because. Look, so my that's why I like Steve's because Steve's does big, yeah, big pieces of of steak. Yeah. So a- a- anybody who's been listening to my critique about cheesesteaks knows that for me, a good cheesesteak should only be the the meat, the cheese, fried onions. Yep. That's all it should be. A long, because, long Italian roll. Because the meat should be so tasty that that is the flavor. Yeah. That that, that should be 
along with the cheese and the onion. Right. But the, 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 the meat should be high quality. That's what right. sells you on a good cheesesteak. Yeah, you want a salty, cheesy, greasy. You shouldn't really need much else. And right. But the thing with Della Sandra is that because the last time that I went there, Again, now this is just my personal experience of the one time that was there, right. like, I guess it was like six or seven months ago. Well, that's more, I, I honestly haven't been to Del Sandro's was, in like five years. It, I haven't, it's been it forever. was a little dry, and it was uh, very, it was very, very granular. Now, I mean, I, I, I'd love to be proven wrong if somebody wants to take me and treat me to Del Sandro's yeah. cheesesteak. Prove me wrong. Right, I, and I'll, me too. I'll never turn down. We will, we will take that, take that one for the team. Right. Um, but, but yeah, I, no, I, I had that feeling because. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the I, again. I forget the name of the show now. Off the top of my head, sue me. I don't know. It was something where like the host goes and he tries to be an employee of the of the and they faction. picked Alessandros. So he they had a cheesesteak episode and and out of all the places in Philadelphia, they chose Del Sandro's. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Are, yeah, are that's they getting curious. too popular too now? Too mainstream. Yeah. Are, are we just cheesesteak hipsters that are too mainstream now? Look, I don't care if I'm a cheesesteak hipster. Screw you. I want a good <laughs> cheesesteak. All right, that's my quest. I will sur- I will go across the country and spread my message. Yeah, but you and would, I have. You wouldn't even try it in Dallas, though. You wussed out. No, that abomination. You got, no, you got to tr- you got to try it, though. No, they don't even and people don't even know about. That. I don't think we ever mentioned that. No, on I the think pod- you told. Did I? I think you did. I probably did. He went to Dallas yeah. and they had a cheesesteak oh. that was not a cheesesteak. They they no. claimed it was a the real cheesesteak no. and it had it had pepper jack cheese, no. No. jalapenos. No. No, and 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 long hot and, and something. It was, it was just like a. Lo- it was like three different types. You said it was like three different types of peppers. Why? Yeah. Why are you putting all sandwich? this pepper? Yeah. So yeah, I had to go to Dallas on a work trip, and somebody knew that I was from Philly, so they had to show me this place that claimed to have the the, the real the authentic. real authentic cheesesteak, and it was BS. It was. It had. I, it had. You're right. It had three different kinds of peppers on it. Like, three no, types of peppers. No. Wh- and where is this fascination with peppers coming from? I mean, I mean, peppers are good, but, but it's not that's not a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> that does not go on a Philly cheesesteak. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop that. They that's can. a whole different sandwich. They they can. They can. They can. No, but that's not. That's, that's a different sandwich. But you can't claim it's the original cheesesteak. No, it's not a Philly cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak does not. Philly cheesesteak should only be cheese, meat, and onion, onions. and your and your long Italian bread. That's it. Oh God! I'm already hey, getting angry. You wanted you wanted a what's pissing me off segment, I but we, we we jumped and now, ahead and, now and I'm already two pissed off pissed segments. Off. Oh damn it! So anyway, the point is that <laughs> we, we were at the Fire and Ice, F- Ice Festival, and I had some tasty cheesesteak food. Okay. Uh, I'm was, glad to that's, see that's what I there. did. Yeah, Steve's. I do like Steve's. And I was checking out the food trucks. So I was like, because <gasps> we were there early, because she was a vendor, and I was like, oh my God, they have Steve's. So I was like, the first in line. Yeah. I'm like, good, let's go. Yeah. All right, so you know, at the end and of the day, they, I'm and glad it, everything and it, worked and out. And it wasn't food truck food. They gave you a whole ass cheesesteak. <laughs> like, no, I'm still like. A whole ass cheesesteak. No, because, no, you know, sometimes you go to food that, trucks. <laughs> that all, as like Mikey's review. A whole ass cheesesteak. whole cheese ass cheesesteak. No, because, you know, sometimes you go to a food truck at these events. And then, Five and then, stars. And there's like little, <laughs> it's like little tiny like bites, right? Yeah. But th- this was like. A whole ass. Like a whole, like they put it in a bag and everything. I'm like, oh, man, this yeah. is. This a whole is, this ass cheesesteak. Yeah, a whole ass cheesesteak. It was good. Perfect. It's excellent. I was eating cheesesteaks. What were you doing this weekend? Yeah. So there you go. Um, <laughs> you sound so dejected. Yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. You know what? Just I, I can't even think about what you're so upset about about cheesesteaks now. Yeah, because it bothered me about Del Sandro's. Del Sandro's used to be a really good place. To well, get don't steak. don't look look. Go there and try it yourself. I, uh, my gonna, my personal experience, like I think it was like seven eight months. I ago. I was worried. Yeah. I th- and I, I I think that's probably what happened. But anyway. Maybe, yeah. Anyway. Yes. Uh, I honestly really didn't do that much this weekend, <laughs> so it's fine. Okay. We're, we're, you know, it's Feb- it's, it's like the end no, of February. Nothing's happening. There's nothing, there's nothing to do. It's there's nowhere to go. Well, I mean, it's not, there's nothing to do. It's just, you know, there's not really, like, things, you know, really planned out at this point, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's I've been... cold. It's nasty. Well, I mean, here in Philadelphia, we've been having weird Powerball temperatures. It's been like it's up, down, 70, 60, 20, 30. Like, it's like all over the place. I just want consistency. That's there all I want. We, we, we literally, in a span of 48 hours, we went from 70 degrees to flurries. Yeah. So yeah. it's been that kind of weather here in Philadelphia. You need to you need to still utilize everything in your closet because yeah, you don't you know what's you coming. You can't plan around it. One day you're in swim trunks. The next day you're going on a expedition in the tundra. 
Yeah, so we're we're at that point in the Philadelphia. I, w- w- I think there's a meme going around where it's this fake is, spring. Yeah, we, we we hit fake spring. We're back to winter. Yeah. So yeah, that's where we are in, in Philadelphia. Uh, okay, L- enough of this <laughs> Philadelphia talk. We need to get to the news at hand, uh, and let's uh, do the first batch of topics. It revolves around sports in the sports sampler. So you're not good at sports. It's a very small part of life. Sports, 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 sports. In your face. <laughs> sports coming at you in your face here. We're going to kick it off with a little bit of an update uh, with baseball. Uh, baseball started spring training. So if you're a fan of baseball like I am, uh, you're a little excited. You know, the ball's <laughs> – what a pun. The ball is rolling <laughs> uh, because we're getting ready. We're in the middle of spring training now. Uh, but last week we covered the new rule changes uh, that will be in effect, and there are a lot of them. Yeah. If you haven't been paying attention to baseball, you might see a whole different ball game literally when you tune in uh, to some baseball this year. Um, and one of the things is the implementation of the pitch clock. This is really a big deal in baseball. It's I quite mean, quite divisive too. It's from what I understand. I mean, look, everybody's complaint is that baseball takes a while and you don't know when mm-hmm. it's going to end. Well, yep. guess what? You got your wish now because now there is a full blown clock where the pitcher has to get ready by a certain amount of time and the batter has to get ready by a certain amount of time. And if one of those people don't, it's a penalty. Either yep. if it's the pitcher, then it's an automatic ball. If it's the batter, it's an automatic strike. Yep. And those are the rules. So uh, you, far, you got you to live by them. No ifs, ands, or buts. And last week, we talked about how big a deal this would be for pitchers. It would make things really difficult for pitchers. Yeah. Right? That, they that, have that to pitch under the gun. That seemed to be the initial thought was that this was going to hurt pitchers because they have, you know, they're trying to go through what, you know, their selection of pitches, like which one and where they want to target and stuff like that. Right. But, but what did I say? Yeah, but Mikey called it, you know, batters have just as much to lose as well because a lot of the baseball players have their own kind of procedure to get ready to bat. Well, they get up there, they play with the bat, they play with themselves, they play <laughs> with the hat. <laughs> it's a whole process. <laughs> okay, Mike. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mikey's getting into the game. Um, well, anyway, yeah, Mikey was right. Uh, he called out that, it, you know, the batters have a little bit of a problem as well. And... Folks, we have a very interesting worst-case scenario that already happened in this first week of spring training, and that was the game against the Boston Red Sox and the Atlanta Braves during spring training. Uh, We have uh, Cal Conley. Uh, He uh, thought that uh, he was going to win the game, apparently. Uh, It was bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, uh, two outs, full count, uh, be, and he's just, you know, getting ready to, you know, see what he can do at the plate, see if he can win the game for his team. Um, but apparently he took too long. Yeah. And the umpire calls him out on it and says, that's an automatic strike. You're out. And the ending is over. That is it. The game ended just like that. Um, it was a tie game, actually. And, and oh, God. I know, just the double oh. double Mikey's frustration because this is spring training. They don't, you know. They Cowards. Don't wanna, they, they don't want to risk injury. So. Cowards. Yeah, so at Weak. the end of the ninth, they just end the game, period. Damn. So the game ends on a walk-off. Tie. <laughs> well, but, but <laughs> specifically a walk-off pitch count penalty. Weird. Yeah, that seems like too many words. We got to figure out a better way to phrase That's this. That's a weird stat column. Yeah, but you know what else it is? Is it's unique and it's interesting, and it it bears fruit of what I was saying. Is that this is people think it's going to be a negative for the pitcher. It's going to be just as tough for batters, and that proves it here. And and people are going to disagree. They're going to say, uh, you know, this is against the the whole uh, the the what, what do you call it? the integrity of the game and it, yeah. you know, it's not really baseball. It's and here's my, here's my thing is that every sport has rules and regulations and, and timing and players have to learn to adapt to that and they have to learn to abide by that. And this is just another example of that. You know, I- they're professionals. They need to know their sport. They need to have game awareness, you know, uh, gone are the days where they can just lollygag around and have conversations and yeah, no. s- swing their bat four or five, six times. It's a guy, it's it's not changing. It's the same bat. 
believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and baseball you know, players are very superstitious. They're very superstitious. They swing the bat three or four times. They tap the base at three or four times. It's, it, it, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there. The bat is still made of wood. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, sometimes we don't have we that. I put a little cork in there from yeah. time to time. Yeah. But the point that I'm making is that, you know, this is it's it's going to test their metal, their their mental fortitude, their ability to adapt, their ability to work under pressure. I think that makes it exciting. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not completely against, you know, having th- these pace of play rules and trying to, you know, get the game to be more compact because it is a criticism yeah you don't know when a baseball game is going to end it could go on forever you go to the ballpark and you take public transportation down you don't know when you're coming home yeah i mean that's a very real concern for those of us that take public transportation yeah but man i'm telling you though i i I always like to think of murphy's law like where you know what can go wrong will go wrong, but everybody forgets the last part and at the worst possible time. Right. I mean, this because was spring training. This is spring training. But. All right. We can give that a pass. There is 162 regular season games. I can give that a pass, too. But if this happens in the playoffs or if this happens in a pennant race or if this happens in the World Series. Yeah. I don't know, man. They, 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 there needs to be for lack of a better word, a ninth inning exemption. I can't imagine a World Series game ending on something like this. Yeah. Like, uh, to me, that would devastate the the image of baseball. So, I don't know. I don't know if there needs to be some sort of ninth inning exemption to this rule, or maybe they make the time longer, or I don't know, something else. But I feel like there needs to be some tweaking here. I'd be because in favor. This could be a problem yeah. in the postseason. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be in favor of, of a rule addendum or an amendment um, that, you know, it doesn't even need to exclude the entire ninth inning, maybe even just the bottom of the ninth, because that's where games are really decided sometimes, you know. Um, but something Yeah, but where you, you, you can't have one you can't have one team get the benefit and the other team not. That's true. That's it has true. to be the whole inning. It has to be the whole inning. You can't just do half an inning. I no. guess I guess that's fair. Um, but my, the other side of this and where, you know, this is where I'm kind of torn. I'm like, all right, make the exemption, um, or on the flip side, you know, hopefully the teams that are in the playoffs, they are of a higher caliber and a higher quality and they won't find themselves in that position or it happens once and it never happens again. You think this guy is going to let that happen to him again? No, never again. This guy is going to be on top of that clock, like peanut butter on jelly. He's going to be watching it like a hawk. Right. And that's kind of what you want. You know, you want the threat of that penalty in order to make the players more aware of the game situation and the time management. Right. Um, So I think it's kind of a self-correcting issue, but I wouldn't be opposed to an exception for the ninth inning. I feel like that's a simple way to to kind of correct that issue of because it is very anticlimactic. Just having the game just all of a sudden just end. The umpire just gets up. Does a hand signal and that's it. The it's game's not over. great when major sporting events end randomly because of a penalty. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we know that here in Philadelphia. Um, yeah, so I would absolutely be be in favor of, of that exemption, I think. Yeah. I, I think that would be the, s- the, the simplest way to fix the issue. Yeah. But I, but I don't I, know. But I would I hope, I've though, that players don't find themselves in that situation because it, if they do, it's not a problem with the rule. It's a problem with the player and the coaching. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, yes, maybe you make the exemption, but still, like, but I, wouldn't you say though it, it, that affects the overall product that you're presenting to the people? I mean, I mean, it this does. Is, yeah. th- this is a presentation. This is a show that you're presenting on television. It, it, that's just a yeah. horrible way to end a show. It is. It's it's the it's a bad season finale. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bad series finale. Yeah. Which and it p- potentially it could this be. could be a a. a, a, a a season finale for I want to see Game 7 of the World Series end on a walk-off. Walk uh, what is it? Walk-off time expiration. That's another something. thing. You're going to have to come up with a better name for this. Something catchier. Walk-off time. Walk-off pitch clock infraction. I don't know. They need to come up with a better name for this. Say, game ended. Batter was lazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Something short and sweet. Batter was stupid. <laughs> batter was stupid, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Took too long. We got bored. Game yeah. over. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking of game over, I think uh, a lot of uh, fans in Denver are feeling this way about their Ooh. team, the Broncos, um, because not only did they have a horrible and disappointing season, considering they had Russell Wilson on their roster and hopes were high that he was going to lead them to the playoffs, but now there's a lot of dirty dishing that is coming out about Russell Wilson, um, about his stay in Seattle. Um, yeah. And I, I know you want to talk about this. Yeah, so a lot is coming to light about Russell Wilson, both while he was in Seattle and, and now that he's with the Broncos, and just like kind of paints the quarterback in a different light. Right? It's almost like Carson Wentzy, which is funny because he got fired. Yeah. And so, but Russell Wilson, you know, everybody loves Russell Wilson, or they did. He was perennial pro bowler, all pro, Super Bowl winner, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Nice Christian man. Nice Christian man. Everybody loves him. Um, except for the amount of control that apparently he wielded in, in certain situations. So in Seattle, you know, near the end there, there are reports that he tried to push to get Pete Carroll fired. And Pete Carroll, I mean, I, I think you have to side with him on this on this argument, right? Yeah. I mean, Pete Carroll is the coach. Russell Wilson, the player, gets you the wins and everything. But Pete Carroll's done nothing but lead that team through, you know, how like a decade plus of, you know, continued success. Yep. You know, it's kind of ridiculous for Wilson to, to fault Carroll there and push to get him fired. And, you know, there were issues with Russell Wilson feeling like he wasn't cooking. Uh, he wasn't cooking. Uh, right? Yeah. They, they wouldn't let him throw. Let Russ cook. They wouldn't let him throw. And he didn't have enough say over the game planning and stuff like this. And I guess quarterbacks do have that to a certain degree. But ultimately, it's up to the coaches. And as a player, you're supposed to uh, put into practice the, the plan that they have. Right? Yeah. Uh, at least that's my view. Right? The coaches cook up the scheme. And the quarterback can have some input. But ultimately, you have to execute what they have cooked up yeah not you're doing the cooking um <laughs> yeah which yeah w wilson wanted to be the cook but the weirder thing though is now that wilson's with denver it seems like he got everything he wanted in seattle and it's kind of telling about like his like attitude towards things so for example the quarterback has his own support staff with the Broncos, like just people working for him, which yeah. is weird in and of itself. But then take into effect that he also has an office, but not just an office, but on a floor with coaches and executives away from his teammates. And yeah. you told them that he, he has he has this office th that's not like it's not like a locker room. Uh, -uh. This is like a right. full blown like. He, s he said he told his teammates that he, quote, has an open door policy. <laughs> Who are you, Michael Scott? Yeah. <laughs> this is, is an open door. You mean like a locker? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, uh, you know. Next to where, your teammates? Where normal, you know, quarterbacks hang out with their team, you know. It's about to get all stupid up in here. <laughs> so, you know, we have all these reports coming out of just how it creates like this weird team dynamic. Like, is Wilson, a coach, a player, apparently has a lot of say over the you know game plans. <laughs> and he well, uh, I'm going to say he used to have a say, right? Because now uh, Sean Payton's in town and, and uh, he doesn't deal with this. He said explicitly that that he doesn't have any experience with this, and and that's not going that that's not uh, going to happen. Yeah, in in Denver, like he has said when asked about these, he's like he basically said, I don't know what that's about, and that's not going to happen. Yeah, in, in this building. So, so Sean Payton's a very different type of coach than I don't even know who Nathaniel the, Hackett. Yeah, some hack job. Um, <laughs> yeah, he had to uh, go to the Jets now. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that's when you know you 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 done messed up. You messed up if you get shipped off to the Jets. <laughs> that's when you done goofed. Because you done goofed. <laughs> you went you went to the Jets. Because <laughs> you done goofed. <laughs> yeah. So it's just painting Russell Wilson in just a a weird. Yeah. New and light. And and it and I see people mention this online that Russell Wilson always felt like a robot imitation of like a quarterback. Like he somebody had a great analogy. They said it seems like he read the you know, a book management management for dummies. 
and then he's going through all the motions, but he doesn't actually know how to do it. That's why he has an office and has motivational posters and <laughs> new, new game uh, plan concepts and then tells his teammates he has an open door policy, but completely tone deaf to the fact that he's supposed to be a teammate first. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are a player. Yeah, and not some weird management robot. Yeah, masquerading as a quarterback. I don't know. What do you, what do you think of all this? Well, the only thing I can think of is this. This is coming to an end. Sean Payton's not going to deal with this. Sean Payton's not that kind of coach no. that's going to let this fly. Uh uh-uh. uh So either he has to really have a big attitude adjustment with this, or there could be some sparks flying in this Broncos season coming up. If I was Hard Knocks, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I think the Broncos are a good choice here to follow behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd like. I'd watch it. Yeah, this seems like it'd be some pretty interesting stuff. Because Sh- Sean on. Payton ain't gonna put up with this. Uh uh-uh. uh no. Sean Payton, it, he is one of those people. He wants to be in total control, you know, of the 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 coaching scheme and the players and everything like that. Yeah. He's he's not gonna allow a uh, an independent support staff. No. Or have uh-uh. a player with an office, yeah. let alone on a completely different floor from the rest of his teammates. Uh-uh. It creates a weird power dynamic, a, a, like a power struggle. It's not good. Yeah. So that You're ain't You're supposed happening. to be a cohesive unit. You yeah. know? I, I don't know. Could we see Wilson's tenure in Denver end prematurely? Wouldn't it be surprising? But the problem is going to be is they promised him a lot of guaranteed money. Yeah. That would pretty much kill their their cap room so they just struggle along with because i think it's coming to light that wilson's not quite the player he was in seattle yeah boy yeah the broncos really uh might have messed up on this trade they could be in deep trouble yeah so i don't know good luck with that denver yeah good luck (laughs) yeah that's that's all we got on that one yep it's gonna be interesting yep but um russell wilson's not the only person who's annoyed at uh, some goings on. Apparently, Rich, something's ticking you off. Yeah, I, I'm a little peeved off at basketball right now. So Uh-oh. let's let's launch into an old segment we haven't done in a while. What's pissing me off? Piss me off. And jerk. Get all my nerves. Oh, uh, yes. It's time to get a little angry here. Um, <laughs> yep. And Mike can I'm do a little dancing. dance. Yeah. Mike can it's do a, a little dance. It's a catchy song, man. Yeah. So I'm just amused at the song, but you're annoyed. What, what's what's going on? Get yeah. it off your chest. What's up, buddy? I, I, we, NBA, you've got to, <laughs> you've, I, I'm, I'm going directly after NBA. Uh-oh. You guys got to do something about the, about the games, the scheduling, and load management. We are officially hitting breaking points now uh, when it comes to these things. Um, there's been multiple stories that I've been seeing on Reddit where people are buying tickets to games. They want to see their favorite stars compete. Um, and then it turns out, you know, they buy the tickets in advance. Um, and then as we get up closer to, you know, the actual date of the games. Oh, sorry. Uh, LeBron James is tired. He's got to take a break. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're on we're on a back to back scheduling. Uh, Joel Embiid can't play tonight. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, Kyrie Irving. Oh, he's he's coming off of a, a little bit of an ankle tweak. He can't play this weekend. Th- this is it's getting to get it's getting to be at serious levels, and I'm just I I, I feel bad, really, for the fans um, because you can't you know assuming you're you're. <laughs> I guess, well, first things first. I guess you're assuming you're going to a team that is competent, you know, that is, you know, trying to make the playoffs, which isn't that hard to do in the NBA because there's 10 teams that make the damn playoffs, which we can get to that another day. Yeah, that's just insanity. But, you know, yeah, you got these families, you know, they're paying 80, 90, 110, $120 a ticket. You're, you're, yeah. You got a family of four. You're trying to bring them to a basketball game. You want them to see, you know, their favorite stars or something. And then, you know, leading up to that game that you bought in advance, the the players don't play because uh, we're, they're on the end of a back-to-back. Oh, well, we don't want him to get hurt. Uh, uh, oh, he's got a little bit of a tweak in his ankle. Uh, we don't want to re-aggravate it. Oh, he's, you know, oh, he's got a headache. Wink, wink. 
Uh, let's see if something else you know can hit yeah. the injury report. There's been so many just kind of one game uh one game uh, absences that have been happening in this season that it's it's genuinely frustrating um and it's getting to the it, it, it's getting to the point where the NBA needs to correct this if they really want to stay and solidify their position as the second best uh sports franchise in North America th- they they got to do something about this um it, it it's 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 getting ridiculous and i am not the only one that has paid attention to this um charles barkley actually has made a very great point about this uh okay. he said this on first take uh this week and i just want to read this quote because this this sums it up that i don't feel sorry for the players uh uh-uh. uh not uh uh-uh. we can't we can't we can't we're not playing this game uh charles barkley said quote Wait a minute. These guys make $70 million or so, and you can't play basketball three days a week? You guys fly private. You got the best medical stuff that has ever been created. There are people that are working in the steel mills every day. I'm sure they're tired, too, but they still go to work every day. Why can't you? Thank you very much, Charles Barkley. Uh, for, for I want to give you a standing ovation or, or something, but obviously I would be out of, out of the camera frame here. Harumph. <laughs> Harumph, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, NBA, get your crap together. Get your scheduling crap together. Stop it with these damn back-to-back schedules because that's an, I, I, why is that still a thing? We, 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 we know that teams do not want to risk their star players on back-to-back, uh, you know, when they're playing consecutive games uh, throughout the week. Stop doing that. And then secondly, I don't know. I don't know if there needs to be some sort of, like, investigative squad but these bs one day absences one day sicknesses need to go because yeah. this is not helping the image of the nba it's frustrating to people that want to you know go to these games that want to see the stars that they paid for it's it's and th- there's a few points uh, that 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 i want to well firstly what you said and what charles barkley said 100 percent accurate i mean especially what he mentioned about people getting on the going to work every day you know, <laughs> it, it, it's not fair that, that people work five, six, seven days a week sometimes, and these players making $70 million can't work three. And I know the arguments that they, they work out, they go to the team facility, yada, yada, yada. It is a job. That is expected. That is part of their job requirements. Yeah. For the job listing they applied to on Indeed. Right, yes. <laughs> to, to become NBA, NBA star, player. play three days, you know, it's part of the... Um, but also, you know... Basketball is unique in that I may be wrong on this, but I feel like I'm not. More than any other sport, it's very focused on the superstar. There's only yes. five you guys on the court at yep. one time. You go to see the, you know, back in the day, the Allen Iversons, the Kobe Bryants, the Michael Jordans, the LeBron James, yep. the the uh, Joel Curry, and Irving, Beats. Joel and Beats. Like you go to see a guy, Giannis. Right. Yeah, you go to see these singular players. When you're watching football, there's 22 guys out there. You know who is that? 67, 62. I don't know. It's a you know, they all kind of look the same. But for basketball, more than any sport, you go to see the guy, whoever the guy is. Yeah. Right. You go to see the legendary performances. So you're right. When you get told, guess what? The guy's not going to be here tonight. Yeah. That kind of sucks. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes you not the guy. You are not the guy. You're not capable of being the guy. I had a guy, but now I don't. You are not the guy. Yes. There you go. Bringing that clip back. Perfect. Um, The other thing, though, on the flip side of this, it's negative for the fans, but it's also negative for the players because I feel bad as well for players who do legitimately need to be on injury reports. Yes, because now it's it, different. Now it muddies the water because now you get fans going, oh, he's a bum. And the guy's going, well, I am actually injured. But you know but what I mean? No, no. I, I know what you're saying. There's a difference. But we don't know as fans when somebody is injured or when somebody is injured. <laughs> yes, that's correct. You know yeah. what I mean? And so <laughs> so what if Joel Embiid is injured? But we're going, he's a bum. He's a bum. Everybody gets on social media, starts attacking. But don't, him. don't you think it's quite convenient? It is that it's one game. Yes. No, you're, you're absolutely right. That's kind of the line in the sand. Yeah. Like if he's truly injured, he needs probably 
uh, if he's really injured, he probably needs multiple games to recover. So, all right, that's a le- that's a legitimate injury. But sometimes, but so many things are just like BS. One game. Oh yeah, he's out for tonight. Like, but you know what? You, you know, we. I'm not a medical professional, so I don't know. Some things might just need a little bit of extra time to recuperate. But the point that I'm making is that it muddies the water. It makes it unfair for and players. And stop the back-to-back games. Let's stop. The easiest way to prevent one-day injuries or load management or real injuries is to stop back-to-back games. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I don't it, know why. The, the, that that the, shouldn't be a thing. Wh- wh- yeah. I, don't, I don't think fans want why it. I don't think players want it. The, the, the damn schedule goes on from October to damn May. You tell you me. You don't have an extra day or two in there? Yeah. You tell me it has to be back-to-back games for some of these weeks? It's, it's outrageous. There should always be a day in between at least. So, you know, it sucks for fans. It sucks. I say it's it sucks for players as well because now, you know, it muddies the water about who's actually injured and who's not injured. We, we don't ever really know. Um, and in addition to that, I think it weakens the image of the NBA – in general, you know, it, it makes it look lazy and kind of silly yeah. that players take games off. And again, we as fans, we just now we're in a mindset where we assume that they're bums, that they're all bums. They might not be, but they could be. But we don't know. And now it gives a negative per overall perception of the product that's being presented yeah. to us. Right. Um, it's, it's very it, frustrating. It's very frustrating. I, I hadn't realized that I hated it until now. And now I hate it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, I never there's so many stories on Reddit, on message boards, you know, like, you know, they're, they're you know, parents want to bring their kids and, you know, to yeah. see their favorite stars. Absolutely. And, and they buy the tickets in advance. And another thing. That and I'm then before you know it, two dates, you know, a day or two before the game is supposed to come. Oh, well, he's not playing. He's we're, he's on load management. Oh, it's he's, it's it's the, it's the back end of a of a back to back. He's not playing. It's it's pretty bad that people find out beforehand like because that there's like planning in that yeah you know what i mean like like if somebody if joel Embiid was like a random scratch the day of okay i don't know he stubbed the toe who knows but if you're told two or three days in advance oh he's gonna miss that game because of reasons unknown like i don't know i feel like that's kind of suspicious too yeah but the other thing that i wanted to mention kind of in addition to all this is this is not like this is not like football where the game was always violent and they're doing new things to protect the health and safety of players. Um, because basketball, they, they used to ask way more of them, but medical procedures and advances have, like, it's, it's so much better now. They have so much better facilities and options, right, that the types of injuries suffered in basketball, I feel like, can be treated better than they were then. Yeah. And players play just... That's, that's what Barkley And that's what Barkley out. was saying. They, they, and they play just as many games, you know, back then as, as they do now, I assume. Yeah. And it was expected you play as and many games as you can. Right. Exactly. Like, Michael Jordan had, I think, five seasons in a row where he only missed one or two games. Yeah. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. Right. And players back then, they, they played all the games, and they had long, healthy careers. And, you know, so... And now we know so much more about sports medicine and and kinesiology and just how the human body works. I I don't feel like they need load management. Does that make me sound like old school? No. Like ah, just rub some spit in it. I don't. I, I don't think so. And I mean, especially we're at a point now where ten teams make the playoffs. You don't really have to try that hard. No. <laughs> yeah. You're not, yeah. You're not really like really scrapping to make a playoff spot. Like you just have to be breathing. <laughs> yeah, you just have to are have you, a pulse. Yeah. Are you trying? <laughs> are you actively trying? I mean, two thirds of teams make it to the playoffs. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Complete BS. That's insane. It's um. But the first thing yeah. NBA can do just to to quench this storm, just stop scheduling back to back games. Just why? Yeah. If you're concerned with player safety, and this is. And I will always be a supporter of, you know, furthering player safety. I don't think load management is the answer. I think it's, like Rich said, stopping with the back-to-back scheduling. I forget that that's a thing in other sports. Because football, we get annoyed when, you know, it's a short week in football. They have, like, five full days to rest. It's like, oh, my God, it's a shortened schedule. And and you're telling me other sports, they go back-to-back? That's insanity. Yep. That's not right. You're, you're, You're putting your players at risk. And then you're taking it out on fans with load ma- with load management. That's not right. 
Yeah. So I don't know. I just saw so many comments uh, and stories. It's it's it it put me over the edge. I had to mention it. No, it was, it was a good topic. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you for letting me vent there. Uh, but now, Mike, it's time for you to get the adrenaline flowing because we're going to hit a couple topics uh, in three minutes or less uh, to close out the sports sampler. It's our three-minute drill. What do you have? All right. Well, this week in the three-minute drill, we have a lot of news coming from the Philadelphia Eagles. They are officially promoting quarterbacks coach Brian Johnson to offensive coordinator to replace departing coach Shane Steichen. Uh, Johnson reportedly had lots of offers for offensive coordinator jobs around the league, and he's considered a quickly rising coaching talent, especially after the work he did with Jalen Hurts, but he opted to stay with the team. He's worked with Hurts basically the quarterback's entire life, so it makes sense that he would want to stay and further that development. And I mean, anybody who watched the Eagles last year, you can't tell me that the progression of Jalen Hurts from year one to two and then two to three has not just been absolutely fantastic. So yeah. I, I love this internal promotion here. Um, on the other side of the ball, though, the Eagles have also hired Seattle Seahawks associate head coach Sean Desai as their new defensive coordinator. And I think I like this signing. The Seahawks, always known for defense, uh, associate head coach uh, right there with Pete Carroll. So he's got some coaching chops. And not only that, Homegrown, he got his first uh, coaching gig at Temple. Oh, and I also read that he has like an insane academic background. I mean, he was like a professor. He has doctorates. He has like like an insanely intelligent individual. And so I really think that that'll be a great addition to the defensive side of the ball, where previously there was no intelligence. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good upgrade there. <laughs> like, all you got to do is be like, oh, maybe I, I shouldn't do the same thing over and over again. Yes. I'm good. not still salty. Uh, so <laughs> two great hires by the Philadelphia Eagles there, I think, in my opinion. Uh, but unfortunately, we may be seeing a departure as well because it looks like the Eagles will be saying goodbye to starting running back Miles Sanders. Yeah. Uh, the reports are that the Eagles are not expected to re-sign him. We kind of knew this. But it's you know still uh, important to hear that kind of semi-confirmation there. They're going to let him test free agency. I guess all we can hope for is he tests free agency. There's nothing there. We get him on a cheap no. deal, but I, I don't think so. No, he'll be picked up by a team. Yeah, he did. He's too good not to. He did well enough this year to get a, a big contract somewhere else, just not in Philadelphia. And finally, how about for uh, some former Eagles players? The Washington Commanders yeah. officially released quarterback Carson Wentz after one miserable season. Um, he's cooked, right? Yeah, I don't know where he goes after this. I, I mean, maybe the Carolina Ra Raiders. Raiders. Uh, I don't know, though. I think his career is done. It's going to be tough because you got Derek Carr out there in free agency. And now uh, also, weirdly, Marcus Mariota. So yeah. there's, a, there's a plethora of, of washed up. <laughs> former successful quarterbacks out there to choose from. Yeah, so good luck to teams that need a quarterback. This is your poll. Good luck. Ah! <laughs> and there you go. That's the end of the three-minute drill. <laughs> when you hear the scream, that's it. <laughs> that's you, it. No when moss. When you hear the scream. <laughs> when you hear the scream, no moss. That is it. That is the end. So there you go. With that, we are done the three-minute drill and the sports sampler. So with that, you know what? I think we've done a lot of talking. We need to take a little bit of a break. Uh, but that will give us enough time to get ready for the entertainment entree and then the non-fortune cookie ah news. Still to come. We'll be right back here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Don't go anywhere. Ready for the weekend? Happy Friday. Hi, my name's Marie, and I'm an artist who's been making Happy Friday doodles every week for over seven years. And now you can own my art collection in this Volume 1 and Volume 2 art series. These doodles span across multiple themes, yearly festivities, various countries, languages, and more. Both coffee table books have something for everyone and are the perfect conversation starter or gift for a friend. Really, anyone who enjoys a good weekend. Available on Amazon, Ingram, Book Baby, Barnes & Noble, and more. Visit happyfridaydoodles.com forward slash books 
and get your copies today. Let's celebrate the best day of the week. Happy Friday. If you go to Taco Bell at 3 in the morning, this is, this is what you're going to get. Yeah, that clip so. is already coming into play. <laughs> yes, I love already. It. So there you go. Stop. What, what happened? The thing yeah, went on. Well, well, how did it turn on? That I weird. don't know. The fart sound. <laughs> the fart sound turned uh, Amazon on? I think the what? fart sound turned on what? my Echo. What the I hell? I don't know. It turned on. What are you doing, Jeff Bezos? What are Jeff you into? Bezos, he's listening to fart sounds. <laughs> he's listening to our <laughs> fart sta- sounds. Oh, my I, God. I changed the trigger word to fart. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fart at it now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's really awkward. You're going to have to. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> How can yeah. I help you? <laughs> you may need some <laughs> bell. Do you want me to automatically order you uh, Pepto Bismol? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking to it solely through farts now. It actually, you, you fart into it. Fart once for yes and twice for no. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, you fart into the device, and then yeah. Amazon can determine what oh, what, what y- medicine you need. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> That's next level right there. Or what you've been eating and what you want to reorder. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I detect Cheetos. <laughs> would you like <laughs> would you like to subscribe? Would you like a bulk order <laughs> of <laughs> Cheetos? <laughs> oh, yes, please. <laughs> Cheetos ordered. Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> that story took a turn. Yeah. Cheetos ordered. <sighs> okay. All right. There you go. The latest from Jeff Bezos and, and Amazon. It's amazing technology, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, we're back here on the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Uh, we have uh, breaking news <laughs> here in Philadelphia. <laughs> as we're recording on this t- late Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> apparently we have a, was it freeze fog? Freezing fog. We, we were talking about the weather in the intro portion of the show. Now we legitimately have a term I've never heard of before. Freezing fog. Uh, maybe I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I've never heard of freezing fog before. Yeah. It's like fog or it's icy. I didn't know that the two could come together. <laughs> yeah. Is this I, 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 Should are we they be refer- scared? Are they referring to snow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> should we be scared like when we get done the podcast when I, we go I back mean, outside? I feel frightened right now. This sounds like a horror should, movie. Like, yeah. It's like the freezing fog. Ooh. Should should we end the podcast now? Like are I we all right? Have, I have no idea. I don't know what to expect here. This is funny. I actually mentioned it like a horror movie. Uh, I was watching um, Red Letter Media and their recent episode of uh, Best of the Worst, and they reviewed a movie um, that was uh, something called like Dark Lightning or something. I forget what it was. Dark it was Lightning. Something Lightning. Okay. The, the premise of the movie is that it's a horror movie. These people get trapped in a, into a house with a... a, a, a you know, stabbing killer, you know, a, a ghost face or something, you know, something, yeah. someone's going to stab you. A stabbing you know, those, killer, yeah. yeah. You know, one of those tropes. Right. But the catch is they can't go outside because there's a special kind of thunderstorm that targets humans. <laughs> The thunderstorm, <laughs> like the elements themselves are targeting just humans. Yes, yeah, somehow. Is, the, it, is it life forms in general or just specifically human beings? I, I believe it's just human beings. What? And apparently this was a real movie that was but made. How does that work? The lightning is like, oh, there's a human. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just gets him. Bam. I don't know. It's, it, there's some bad horror movies out there. Yeah. Like if you ever so want you, th- the problem is with a horror movie like that you have to find a, a unique way why can't the victims just leave the house leave yeah right lock the doors I don't know 
but there, there has to be a there, better way. Right. Their solution was the weather is Dark so lightning. bad. The weather is so the weather is going to prevent you from getting to help. Why didn't they do this? They're locked in the house with the killer and outside there's a worse killer. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, oh, do we go outside? Well, isn't isn't that like a Freddy versus Jason movie then? <laughs> like, sure, I, yeah, yeah, I guess so. That's like one of those horror team ups. It's like, it's like you pick which killer do you want to face? You like face the killer that you know, <laughs> or the killer you don't, <laughs> or the killer Actually, that you don't. It's the horror f- of horror form of uh, let's make a deal. Do you want? <laughs> would you like to deal with Ghostface, or do you want to take what's behind door number two? Ooh. <laughs> and they have the dramatic music, and for some reason, the lady and scant, you know, scantily clothed lady, like yeah. doing this. Make with your the door. make your choice. Yeah. yeah. Do you want Do you want Jason, or think, do you want what's behind door number three? I think statistically, you're always supposed to pick the door, right? Isn't that Isn't that the the mathematical uh, uh, probability? Now you're talking about the Monty Hall problem, and you've it's come to the right person because I'm the game show oh no. expert. The podcast just changed. Yes, you did. <laughs> you opened up a bag of worms. Oh boy. So the Monty Hall problem. It's like it's the one where it's like there's three doors and one has like there's a known value and then there's two with unknown values. And well, so, all right, hold no, on. no, no, let, no. Let, I'm wrong. Let's get. Yeah. Let me get get you on okay. the right path. So let's make a deal. There's three doors. One, two right. and three. Exactly. You pick a door and they reveal one of the one other. Of, one of the doors is going to have the car. You right. want to try and get the car. The other right. two are X's. Uh-uh. Right. So you pick a door. Let's say you pick door two. Right. Before I show you what's behind door number two, I'm going to show you what's behind door number three. Exactly. That there's nothing behind door number three. Right. Then I come to you and I say, now, would you like to switch your 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 pick? You can go from number two to number one. Right. In that in that scenario, you should always you should always switch because before you had a one in three probability. But in this scenario of 50, 50, 50, 50. Right. Because that me showing you. That the third door was nothing changes the whole dynamic of the gambling. Right. Now, so, that's not to say you're going to win if you switch doors, but probability-wise, I've I've read, I don't know enough about it to know, but you've confirmed for me that yes. statistically, for some weird reason, you're supposed to switch doors. Yes. It, and, and it works out, too. There is, yeah. I, I, I think it's, I think just Google Monty Hall problem. There is a simulator where it will, it, you can run the test a thousand times where you switch and when you don't switch, and it significantly does better when you switch. Wow. It's just the way it works. So the old saying, go with your gut, is not true. You should always go in with that your, second, your second gut. In that situation, <laughs> that is correct, yes. Go with your second gut, kids. And don't be trapped in a house with a murderer. That's right. <laughs> and watch out for dark lightning or whatever it was called. I forgot what the movie Sage was called. Sage advice here yeah. on the Crispy Little Podcast. Where else are you going to get life lessons like this? Yes. Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And frozen fog or whatever never heard of that before we just hit you with so many facts so quickly we understand it's a little overwhelming but that's why (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's why we have some (laughs) breaks here to alleviate the pain so let's go with uh the beginning the official beginning of the entertainment entree and now the latest in movies Especially when that guy was on the roof. Music. I know what that is. That's music. Video games. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Celebrities. You really know Warren Beatty? Yes, I do. I took a leak next to him once at the Golden Globes. And more. You're the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. This is the Entertainment Entree. All right, there we go. We're officially in entertainment entree time. And uh, we're going to g- go with the segment where Mike is going to let you know what's coming up this weekend. <laughs> if you are trapped in a house, hopefully not with a murderer, but things that you can do <laughs> if you are trapped in a house uh, with Mike's This Week in Entertainment. All right, Mikey, what do you got for the people? All right, well, this week in entertainment, first in movies, you'll want to check out Palm Trees and Power Lines. This is getting, I believe, a... Is it the cousin of Dark Lightning? It may. It, it might be. It might be the, the, <laughs> the unknown sequel here. Uh, but I believe this is available uh, in theaters and also um, uh, premium streaming. Uh, but it's a new coming-of-age drama about a disconnected teenage girl who starts a relationship with a man twice her age. 
She thinks he's the answer to her problems, but his intentions may not be what they seem. The movie has already garnered some awards at film festivals and currently has a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes and an 83 out of 100 on Metacritic. So go check that out. It's getting some good reviews. But of course, the big movie this week is Creed 3. This is the ninth movie in the Rocky series, but well, the first. Yeah, this is, this is really their own series now. Creed is officially on his uh, own. Th- yes, but they still consider it the same Rocky universe. Because every Rocky cinematic the universe. The Rocky cin- the RCU. Yeah. Uh, but this is the first one without Sylvester Stallone. Um, he's currently having some legal issues with the production company over the rights to his work. So he's not in this movie, the first one in the nine-movie Rock- Rocky saga. Um, but despite that uh, marring the, the, the movie... Um, Creed 3 still sounds pretty interesting. It, we see Adonis Creed's personal and boxing life thriving when a childhood friend and boxing prodigy returns from a lengthy prison stay, and he's eager to prove himself in the ring and has nothing to lose. The film has decent reviews already with a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 72 out of 100 on Metacritic. So go check out Creed 3 as well. I like the first two, so I'm, I'm excited to see the third one, actually. Uh, I, I, I like the Creed movies. There you go. But the big news, of course, in entertainment this week, TV, The Mandalorian uh, Season 3 comes to Disney+. Plus. Pedro Pascal is having the year of his he's, life. He's everywhere, man. He's yeah. like the the top of the world right now. He literally now. has owned our attention spans for all of 2023. Yes, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm really excited. Even, even when he was on Saturday Night Live, he was uh, he was fantastic. Yeah, like literally, he's done everything right this year. He's, I mean, he deserves it though. He's yeah. he he seems like a, a real gem. Uh, but The Mandalorian season three, I mean, season two was I think head and shoulders above season one. Yeah, it was um, very good. And for me personally, it was the expansion of that lore. We learned uh, so much more about the world and the characters within it and the history, and I really hope they continue to further that in Mandalorian Season 3. Um, it's out this week. Go check it out on Disney+. Yeah, Plus. literally. Super, super excited. Crazy stuff there. Yeah. And there you go. That's what Mikey has for you in This Week in Entertainment. Uh, also, by the way, the, the name of the movie was Mega Lightning. That's dumber, even dumber. <laughs> no, no. Yes, that's the name no. of the movie. Meg- mega lightning? Mega as lightning. As opposed to what? Super lightning? Regular lightning? Mega. Mega lightning. Yes. What does it even mean? It means that this lightning The lightning is mega? You. This lightning is, is, is a homing missile. It is targeted on your ass. It is going to get you. And you, and you watched this movie. No, you, you well, watched I, it with your eyes. Oh, no, you watched a Red Letter Media. Yeah. because they So they do a show called Best of the Worst. Okay. And they, the idea is they watch really crappy movies, and they make fun of them. Okay, so. And they found this movie. So you can watch it on, on Tubi. <laughs> there you go. You can experience the, the mega lightning sensation. Wait, after a violent thunderstorm scares a house party, the guests flee to a nearby home for shelter. But you were <laughs> you were already in a house. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Stop and they tr- discover a more sinister hand is at play. Now they can't escape the stranger's home due to the thunderstorm, but they can't stay inside. Oh, man, I am... 100% watching this movie. All right, I'm there you watching go. this movie this weekend. I will come back with a full review. All right. I gave you something to do then this weekend. I feel weekend. like I lost a few brain cells. Yes. Just that, reading that, that description. That's, that's what's going to happen with this uh, movie. You know who else is losing brain cells? <laughs> <laughs> who else, Mike? Rocksteady, the former developer of the Batman Arkham series of video games, a uh, series that we love so much, right? Yep. Uh, one of our Arkham. favorites, the Arkham games. Yep. Fantastic stuff. Uh, unfortunately, they're catching a lot of flack recently. PlayStation had a State of Play video showcase where they show some upcoming games and projects that they're working on. Um, and the centerpiece was Rocksteady's new game. We've been waiting a long time. I don't know when Arkham Knight came out. It's been a long... Oh, yeah. It's been at least, like, almost a decade, I yeah. think, right? Like, a yeah. long while. Uh, so people were excited to see their next project. And fans are not happy. Nope. Uh, articles are being written about how bad this game looks and the fall from grace that Rocksteady apparently has taken. 
So they had a lengthy preview of Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, and fans everywhere are in an uproar. Um, the response, uh, as Forbes put it, is abysmal. Uh, looks like s- live service hell, they said. The articles being written on this game are shocking to see the, the headlines. Um, so just a few tidbits here to help listeners understand. So a live service game is one of these types of games where it's constantly evolving and being supported like Fortnite, where there's like constantly little drops of content, right? Like new skins and new weapons and like new maps, but it's all online and it's very loot driven. So you're constantly chasing like, uh, you know, running and killing bad guys to try and get the next best piece of loot to, you know, keep on increasing your your gear level to get more and more powerful. And it's just a constant cycle of finding new lo- loot that's more powerful to find more loot that's more powerful and just keeps going on and on like that. Um, this was a type of game that was very popular a few years ago when Fortnite became huge. And it's kind of still popular, but it's not popular outside of those few big games like Fortnite and Destiny, yeah. right? We mentioned Destiny just last week. So really the problem with this game is that it feels like it should have come out like four or five years ago. Yeah. And and that is what this, people... Yeah, this does not seem like a 2023 game. No, people and people are saying like this just looks like it's out of time and out of place. Um, And some of the design decisions are just weird. Like, you can't play the game completely by yourself. Even if you play solo, the other characters are filled in with AI bots. So there's always, like, the four Suicide Squad members, and that might not be a huge issue, but clearly it's designed to be played co-op online. So if you decide to play solo, are you getting a full experience or are you just getting some weird, like, haphazardly slapped together, you know, solo mode? The other big issue is it requires constant internet connection even for s- single player that, that mode. That I, doesn't I, that make any sense to me. And that annoys me. I, I, don't, I don't like that idea. So, so if my internet goes down, I can't play this game at all. Like, that, that to me, that's a weird... There, I, I don't think there's any a like, weird pitfall. I think they'll probably change that after the backlash. I feel like they would have to, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like if you need an internet connection, if the internet is down, or for some reason there's a glitch with the servers, or a, a bug with the console, or I don't it, like anything. Maybe you live in an area with spotty internet. Oh, oh well, too bad. Yeah, you can't play. Um, the bigger issue though, that and I think that you may agree with this, being being a, a DC fan here is I think they're they're just misinterpreting what fans want from these properties. So the biggest complaint amongst gamers that I'm seeing is that every character looks the same. <laughs> Meaning that yeah. you have four you have Harley Quinn, you have uh King Shark or Shark King whatever his name is. Um you have Deadshot and Boomerang Man. Th- this is <laughs> Yeah, Boomerang Man or Captain Boomerang whatever. This is the Suicide Squad. And you would think, like, oh, Harley Quinn, she's known for her bat and her acrobatics. And King Shark is known for, like, being, like, a big, brawling, like, melee-type person. Deadshot obviously has all the high-tech gadgets. No. Every character just hovers and shoots machine guns. <laughs> and, like, and like literally, like, even King Shark, who's, like, a big shark. <laughs> like, literally, he's, like, the Hulk, but a shark. Yeah. And he's just, like, flying, like... Like literally, like flying around the map, and everybody has like a grapple hook or like a or like a jetpack, and they're just hovering and shooting bad guys. And the bad guys are all generic; and it's just wave after wave, and you just shoot like the little purple weak spots. And everyone watches this and goes, "Why even bother with the DC branding?" Yeah, that d- well, yeah. Do you even really need DC in this game? Like, if you pick up a game of Suicide Squad and you're gonna play as Harley Quinn, like that sounds like fun. What would you expect Harley Quinn? to do as a character. Like, do you expect her to hover with a jetpack and shoot an SMG at a bad guy? No, no you expect no. the bat, you expect the, the, the circus hammer thing. Yeah. Like, 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 what the hell? Like, fun, creative, like, close quarters melee combat. Yeah. Like, the Arkham games. It's almost like they've done this before, and I think that's the shocking thing. Like, they had a formula that worked, worked so well, 
that other games try to copy that combat, and then they just throw it all away. It, you know, is it a little bit like they were trying to do something like that was so far out of Arkham, like they didn't want. They were so afraid they were going to repeat Arkham that they were like, "We're going to do everything like completely different." Yeah. If that's what they're going for, it's not working. No. I have, I have not seen negative reaction to a game like this in in a while. Like it's pretty universal. Like I've not read anything positive about this game. When other similar games like Marvel's Avengers came out, people were like, "Oh, I don't like that it's live service." Yada yada yada. But people always said, "Well, every character controls differently." Yeah. Like every character has their own unique skill set. But you're not seeing anything positive this time, and it really no matter what the medium is, it always comes down to Marvel understands their characters, <laughs> and DC just doesn't. Yeah. When, when, like, when, why when, is this plaguing DC everywhere I they go? Know. It really, I don't know, DC just needs to step back. Just stop it being directly involved in things. Literally, we have the track record. When they, don't, when they are not directly involved in things, the DC properties do better without DC. It kind of feels like that's what's happening here, because remember, guys... There's been a huge push for the Suicide Squad from DC in general. Yeah. So could you see this as like, oh, we have the new HBO Max movie, and we have the spinoff TV shows. What's next? Video game. Woo! Do you, do you think that's what we're, we're experiencing here? It's just WB being like, hey, we need a video game for these characters. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, and it would make a lot of sense. Because they just, it, it, again, it just it, it follows the, the trajectory. It follows the trend. Yeah. So please, And it's so disappointing. DC, stop doing this. <laughs> stop directly being involved in things. Because, you know what's interesting is the WB game, the Warner Brothers game that's doing really well right now, Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. And they were like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't, we're not really fans of Harry Potter because J.K. Rowling said some some really offensive things. So they tried to distance themselves from it. And, and the now game it's is, great. is to get, like, it is so good. Yeah. Because they were like, they don't want to associate with it at all. Right. And they they're like, oh, no, wait, we totally love it. And they're trying to bring it back in. Yeah. So follow I, that model. Stop being directly involved in things. <laughs> it's just really disappointing when developers and publishers keep saying, oh, games need to be online because that's what people want. And then a strictly single player game goes out and is like the best game in the world currently. <laughs> Number one, yeah, on, on everything, on Steam, on, on PlayStation on Store, yep. Crazy. It's almost like people still like and play single-player games. Yeah. yeah. Go figure. I right. don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I spent us. $80 on it. That's you know us. what I won't be spending $80 on? Yeah. I'll give you one guess. <laughs> it begins with S&S. &S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, with that, anyway. let's move on to the final portion of the show. We need to end on a laugh. It is time for the non- Fortune Cookie Odd News. We've been talking about cool and its uh, ramifications and how it applies to the hip scene. But maybe you could give us some examples now of the opposite of cool. Uncool. Just exactly what is uncool. My nipples look like milk studs. Holy shnikes. It's time for the non-Fortune Cookie Odd News. It's not of this world. I don't know exactly what it is or what it's doing, but this is not human intelligence, okay? It's not human intelligence we're facing! How you doing? <laughs> See? I'm doing great. I don't make this stuff up. I'll take a pound of nuts. That's a lot of nuts! That'll be four bucks, baby! You want fries with that? <laughs> I've seen the celery dance across the baseball fields. You had me at meat tornado. No, 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 go past this. Pass this part. Fact, never play this again. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what does that mean? And now it's time for the non fortune cookie odd news. So sit back, get everything you need to get from the kitchen. Be sure and empty the bladders. Go to the bathroom because you're in for hell, right? Odd news. That's right, everyone. It's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news here in this segment. Rich researches the news, he reads the news, and I react to the news. He finds a weird and wacky story, he keeps it hidden from me, which ensures that all of my reactions are my genuine gut reactions to hearing these stories for the very first time. That means that I don't know what's about to happen, you guys don't know what's about to happen, and even Rich doesn't know what's about to happen because these stories always take us down 
wacky and wild paths, and I'm ready to get started. Where are we heading to and why? Uh, just why in general? Just, just why? <laughs> yeah, so just why are we going there? Just why? why? Like, like, I don't like, know. Like, like life, why? Like why? <laughs> like why? Well, there's mega lightning now, okay? Yeah, we have mega so lightning I have lots with. of questions about life. And freeze fog. And freezing fog. Mm. Mega lightning, freezing fog. What other weird yeah, we, weather there's, anomalies? There's weird things happening. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, another shout out to our beat reporter on the street, yes. Joe Chapek. Yes. He is doing a wonderful job being our assistant odd news deputy chief. He's our odd news correspondent. <laughs> yep. Uh, he sent me this story on Twitter, so I have to give him the sausage shout out. Sausages! There you go. Very Super nice. fan Chapek. Super fan Chapek. What's he got for us this week? Uh, just a reminder, too, if you want to send me odd news to talk about on future episodes of the podcast, tweet at Rich Liebig, R I C H L I E B I G. And uh, we'll talk about them. So yep. uh, super, fa- super fan Chapek took advantage of that and gets the sausage shout out. Sausages! All right. He wanted us to talk about this story. Uh, going to Georgia. Okay. So right Down next to south. Florida. Right. Ne- you know, I feel like they share a lot in common. So yeah. it's, it's okay. Well, uh, a Georgia woman was recently arrested after authorities said that she purposely crashed into a Popeye's restaurant because they forgot her biscuits. You don't make me my ultimate form. No, I'm going to f***ing kill you, motherfucker, old style. How dare you, you? can't forget the biscuits. How dare you? The biscuits are the most important thing of my day. I love biscuits. They are the most important foodstuffs of my day. They're delicious. I, I am in full I support of this woman. I cannot live without no. these biscuits. No, this woman this woman is a hero. Because <laughs> you done goofed. How dare you, Popeyes. And they say they want to be a contender to Chick-fil-A. You get out of here. How can you contend if you can't even put biscuits in, in the bag? Yes. No. You get out of here. I feel like the real crime here was forgetting the biscuits. <laughs> yes. I'm serious. And you're in Georgia, too. Isn't that the home of Chick-fil-A? Well, you're, I you're, you're, trying, you're trying to contend with Chick-fil-A on their home turf. You get yeah. out of here. You can't even handle the biscuits. You can't even you handle, can't handle the biscuits. <laughs> can't handle them. You can't handle the biscuits. <laughs> that's what I want that. I don't know how. I want, you can't handle the biscuits. I want, that's like I a want slogan a, for something. I want to redo... Uh, a few good men. Um, I want the biscuits. I want the biscuits. You can't handle the biscuits. <laughs> They're too hot and buttery and fluffy. You can't handle them. Son, we live in a state <laughs> where we have Chick-fil-A. It's and Georgia. We need, <laughs> and we need someone who needs to guard that Chick-fil-A. Who's going to do it? You? <laughs> you, Lieutenant Weinberg? <laughs> you, can't do, you can do the whole movie like that. I have a responsibility that you can't even possibly fathom. <laughs> <laughs> to make biscuits. <laughs> Oh, man. So yes. so she found herself in that situation. She wanted the biscuits. They said that she couldn't handle them. <laughs> and so she drove her car straight into the Popeyes. Yes. How dare you? That's, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's interesting when you think about the mechanics. Like, I ju- I'm just imagining being in a parking lot and, like, you drive down to the one end, you whip a 180, and you just floor it straight I've at. I've had enough of this <laughs> crap. <laughs> enough of this. You just floor it straight at the restaurant. Like, that takes balls, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know that I could do that. No. Uh, the heroic woman here. <laughs> right. True uh, hero. Is 50-year-old. Oh, 50. She's 50. There you go. I like to kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 50. 50 years old. She probably said that going right through the damn restaurant. Probably. I'm 50. I had enough of this. I'm 50. 50 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this heroic woman is 50-year-old Belinda Miller. Belinda. Belinda. That's a name. What a name. That I haven't heard. That's a heroic name. Belinda. Belinda. Okay. <laughs> Take that. Uh, she's from Augusta. Okay. Wow. Wow. Uh, I, you know what? I guess, you know, I, look, people at the Masters, they're, they're probably upset about their biscuits if they don't get it. I feel like everybody likes a good biscuit. Yeah. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter if you are playing putt putt mini golf or the masters. Biscuits are are universal. They bring people together. Like look, they're Augusta, delicious. Augusta is known for having like a reasonable food stand where really? like you get good food at reasonable prices. Like what kind of food? Like hot dogs and stuff like that. 
I thought you were going to hit me with something like fancy. It's the Masters. Are you give me hot dogs? Well, that's what Is I'm saying. Is there caviar on it? Or? No, but that's what I'm saying. People think like it's like, oh, the hoity-toity, like, you know. Oh, you're saying, oh, right. It would People think it's like hoity-toity eating everything with their pinky out, but really it's just dollar dogs and nachos. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's supposed okay. to be like good quality, too. Good like, quality dollar dogs. So maybe mm. they have biscuits there, too. It wouldn't surprise me. I feel like there should be biscuits there on should be, every menu everywhere. There should be a biscuit on every golf course. <laughs> I'm Rich, I'm Rich Liebig, and I'm running for president. It's Rich Liebig, 2024. <laughs> there needs to be a biscuit. I'm going to put a biscuit on every golf course. Yes. <laughs> Little biscuit stand. All across America, biscuits as far as the eye can see. And we're going to employ people, and that's how we're going to solve that's right. the unemployment. That's right. He's creating jobs, folks. Yes. He's creating jobs by putting biscuits in the hands of golfers across the nation. There you go. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. There you go. There It'll be charged a dollar. That's right. And we won't forget it. Unlike this Popeyes mm. trying to survive in Chick-fil-A land. It really is. That really is the crime is forgetting the, the biscuit. Yeah. Uh, okay. So here's the real story. We're, we're uh, going off on okay. a tangent here, but I need to tell you the real story. So this happened Saturday night uh, at 7.45 p.m. Okay. Uh, cops uh, were <laughs> – cops had to respond to the chicken restaurant in Augusta. Uh, the Popeye's manager told deputies that Miller straight up drove her SUV into the east entrance. <laughs> uh, she, got, she got out of the SUV and immediately started screaming because her order did not have any biscuits. <laughs> No, I'm not f***ing kill you, motherfucker, old style. That's impressive that she drove through the store, then immediately got out and, like, started shouting. Like, that's, that is such, so much adrenaline right there. Yeah. Like, she's not, like, injured from the crash or nothing. Oh, no, she, she is full-blown just that is what, running on anger. That is what biscuit rage does to people. Yeah. Gives them superpowers. She, she is, you know, whenever the dark side... Uh, Sith or whatever. Whenever they say like you know, hate is a weapon or something. This is it. <laughs> like she is channeling all of her hate, all of that dark side energy. Yeah, just like I've had enough. I'm using this as a weapon. A, a car accident won't stop me. No, a nothing. building won't stop me. Nothing will come between this woman and her biscuits. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. Even while. <laughs> She was stumbling out of the SUV. <laughs> she is. She was calling and threatening employees that she was going to kill them. Oh my god! <laughs> She's like crawling over rubble. She's like, <laughs> I'm gonna get you, I'm bastards! Gonna get you. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fucking kill you, motherfucker, old style. She is. Give me still, my biscuits. Still going. Yes. Wow. So did she get her biscuits or no? Oh man. So, uh. Probably oh, not. So yeah, I got uh -oh. the the so I got the kicker here. According to the manager, okay. Uh, after the police report was filed, the manager told the cops that she was incorrect and that biscuits were in the bag. <laughs> that oh, whoops! <laughs> that she get that the employees gave to Miller in the drive thru Uh oh. <laughs> whoops! This so. cannot be made good. It's shameful. It's a shameful, shameful day. And I know who it's coming from because I backtraced it. The, the manager backtraced it. <laughs> yes. That manager doing doing the Lord's work over there. I have to retract my statement. I no longer support this woman. She's just biscuit blind. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag biscuit Hashtag blind. Hashtag biscuit blind. I like that. Biscuit blind. Biscuit rage, biscuit blind. Um, how do you, how, now my question is how do you miss that? Like, if you're that focused on biscuits, how do you overlook them? I, I don't know. You she just she lose didn't them, see in, the, them. In, the, in the shuffle? She, yeah, I guess she didn't. Or, or is the manager lying to save face? I mean, look, that could be an option here. It could be it. Like The manager's like, we got to, you know, we got to make ourselves look good here. We got to, you know. They are in Chick-fil-A land. This doesn't the, look good. Right, exactly. But If news gets out that Popeye's is just forgetting biscuits. Yeah, no one's going to come. No, no. So it, that could be an option. Yeah. But that would be hilarious if that is the case. That would be pretty funny. I need to have an independent. This is an entire biscuit conspiracy theory. We need to hire a private detective, an independent private detective, to figure out if that really is the case. We need to have like a whole like committee sub panel review investigation. Yes. Call like, the Senate. I call want... the Senate. Like yes, this needs to go all the way to the top. Because all the way. Right. Because 
I don't know. Wh- <laughs> either way is funny. I, n- I need to know. I need to know if the biscuits were in that bag. Yeah. This is this is paramount to I can't trust everything I else. can't trust the manager. No. But that is hilarious. If she No, you can't trust the manager because the manager has a, a vested interest in this and right. you can't trust the lady because she also is in directly involved. We need an independent investigation into the presence or lack thereof of biscuits in the woman's bag. Yes. And I will not rest until we find out. Yes. So we need to hire a, a third party independent team to figure this out. Yes. Very important. Absolutely. Uh so uh after she realized that she, you know, had her SUV uh, you know, <laughs> in the restaurant. In the restaurant. <laughs> she decided to hop back in and drove <laughs> and drove away. <laughs> I, makes sense. And what else are you gonna do at that point? Uh she went right home. <laughs> And cops were able to confront her. Well, yeah. With her SUV having severe front end damage. <laughs> She's probably still got like the Popeye sign <laughs> like stuck in it. There's probably like a big P yeah. like backwards yeah. that's uh, like stuck or embedded in like the front of the SUV. There's, like rubble, like still everywhere. Yeah. So the cops didn't really have to do that much work in tracking her down. No. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, she's being uh, charged with felony aggravated assault and criminal damage to property in the first degree. Yeah, that makes sense. So that makes sense. She's going to have uh, some some difficult uh, times uh, with her lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't think there's any biscuits where she's going. No, I mean, I don't know. Maybe in prison. Maybe maybe she could you volunteer. Think you think there's biscuits in prison? Maybe she could volunteer in in the. In the kitchen? Cooking areas, and she could make biscuits She can make her own biscuits. Yeah, she can make her own biscuits. Wow. Now, that, that's a story. I mean, <laughs> look. If you I don't go know what kind of story, but that's a story. <laughs> you got to go to prison, and it was for biscuits. Try and make them in prison. And they, there spread, you go. Spread the love of biscuits to everyone. Spread the love of biscuits. Spread, yes. spread your biscuits. Right. <laughs> Rich Liebig, 2024. <laughs> spread your biscuits. Spread your just biscuits. a thumbs up. Spread your biscuits. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds vaguely sexual. Spread your biscuits. Oh. Spread your biscuits, 2024. That's r- that's my presidential slogan. I like it. I'd vote for him. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. You have exactly one vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Rich Liebig, spread your biscuits. <laughs> All right. Anyway, there you go. That's <laughs> that's what I have for you this week in the non Portugal Kiad news. What a great campaign slogan! Yeah, I think that <laughs> there's some classic ones over over the course of history. You got like Tip a Canoe and Tyler too. You have was it forty eight forty or fight? You got all sorts of no slogans. new taxes. No new yeah, but, but spread your biscuits. Spread your biscuits. Twenty twenty four. Nothing like it. Rich Liebe. There you go. Beautiful. I think I think we've got a winner. <laughs> There you go. All right, and there you go. We got to wrap up this episode. We're we're, we're going off. We're talking deep about end. biscuits. It's too much. It's it's too much. This late at night with freeze fog coming up and mega lightning we, we, and mega lightning. <laughs> we got to protect our biscuits. <laughs> That's right. We gotta, we, <laughs> it's not protect good. the biscuits. We got to protect our biscuits and wrap up this episode of the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, cr- <laughs> catching our craziness. If you like what you heard, make sure you go to our website, thecrispynoodle.com. Make sure you follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. But most importantly, make sure you have a way to get the episode, every episode of the podcast, every week. uh, Whether it's through YouTube, where you can uh, just hit the subscribe button and it will be sent to your YouTube account. Uh, Whether it's on Facebook, where we're on Facebook Watch, and you can watch us literally on Facebook. Uh, or it's uh, or on Spotify. <laughs> I'm, I'm obsessed with the biscuits. I'm sorry. Uh, got or biscuit on, on the brain. Yes, I want a good biscuit now. Uh, or uh, you can get us on Spotify, where we have the video podcast posted directly on Spotify. But you can put Spotify in the background as well and listen to us as a traditional audio podcast. And at that rate, you can take us on the go on Spotify by using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So we can be uh, through your car speakers as well while you're taking the next trip to Georgia to grab your biscuits. That's right. I mean, it's the perfect length of podcast to 
you know, make a trip somewhere to get some biscuits. So many ways to watch and listen to the Crispy Noodle podcast. But if you need to get in touch with us individually to share your biscuit stories, you can find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Mikey Costanzo, M-I-K-E-Y-C-O-S-T-A-N-Z-O. And I am at Rich Lee Big, R-I-C-H-L-I-E-B-I-G. Find us on Twitter and let us know what you want us to talk about on next week's episode. If you have an odd news story, make sure you send it to me like uh, Superfan Chapek does. He's yeah. our, our beat <laughs> odd news reporter on the yeah, street. Man. He's a correspondent. Yeah. So uh, if you want to help us out as well with future topics, make sure you get into, t- into, into contact with us on Twitter. Uh, but for right now, we got to start wrapping this episode up. This has been the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the crispy noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. That will do it. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys later. Bye-bye, all you fine peoples. Good night. And spread your biscuits. Some of us have great stories, pretty stories that take place at lakes with boats and friends and noodle salad. A lot of people, that's their story. Good times, noodle salad.